Hello, good morning, everyone. I think the two sessions were very, you know, insightful. The case study, which Apurva talked about, and the Janai Flipkart. So a lot of Janai. Now let's come to the bread and butter, <laughs> the, the basic things which you do. So uh, this is a point of view which you know uh, we are talking about with a lot of our customers. And I thought, you know, let's let's share that. What, how do we design for future? or how do we cater the various expectation of the next generation user group, which mostly you know, includes the Gen Zs or millennials or the Xenials, I would say. Uh, but we are not saying anything to, uh, you know, specific to Gen Z, but today every users are next generation, whether it's a 70-year-old you know, uh, senior citizen or a teenager or maybe an adult. What we, we are looking for, uh, in the financial services, like if we go almost two decades or a half decade before, most of the, uh, you know, uh, digital transformation were targeted on the manual process to be digitized. So the context here is that when in late 90s or early 2000 before iPhone came, lot of focus was on how the things can be, you know, improve the things can be more digitized. But the user experience or I would say the customer experience was not targeted. People were only thinking that how I can move from mainframe to a web-based application or maybe when iPhone came how some of the uh, journeys can be on mobile as a responsive. Uh, we, we were not even in the mobile app journey or a mobile first journey in the late 2010 or something. Now. That's the context, you know, uh, and a lot of people, I think the senior people who have contributed to create that digital journey or they will the initial, you know, uh, debutant of, you know, creating the digital world. Let's, let's again go back, as I said, uh, the most of the focus on, on the manual journeys to be digitized. They were not thinking that how it's going to impact the user groups, how it's going to impact to the you know, legacy applications. They were focused only on, you know, how the things can be more on computers or more on a better technology. But I think this is the time where we have to reimagine the entire user experience or a customer experience for our next generation user group. So let's have some key stats. We did a research now. This is, this is a research based out of North America, Europe, uh, done by our research institute in Capgemini that Almost 70% people wanted to be connected, and speci specifically after COVID, you know, people are, uh, you know, more lazy. They want everything on their mobile. They want all notifications to be come out. They don't want to, you know, go and type. They they want to be connected to every whether their family, friends, their offices, and all those stuffs. People want personalized data. They they want that, you know, I whatever information I am getting that should be around my ecosystem. They want tailored services. They want, you know, even the offers to align to be their expectation. And finally, they want everything to be real time. Uh, whether they chat, whether they claim, whether they, you know, talk with any financial advisor or whether they purchase any products on retail websites, everything should be real time. Now, what point of view we brought, uh, and, and this is very much, you know, realistic in today's world, that the next generation is basically digitally native. The people who are using uh, all kind of devices, they are digitally native. They are using mobile phone, they are using watches, they are using you know, OTT platforms and you know, uh, different variety of computers and laptops. And what they exactly want, they want a personalized data. They want, you know, they are fully influenced. They are influenced by social media. For an example, people don't uh, book tickets or go for a vacation from a website, they follow their influencer. People don't, you know, uh, invest in stocks just look into the market. They follow, you know, financial influencers or advisors and, for, you know, go with their suggestions. And also, they are very much socially responsible. They, they look for, you know, investment in the green uh, companies which are, you know, more sustainable. They are, they are uh, more ethical. Plus, they want seamless experience. Whatever they do on mobile, they want you know that that journey should be continued on their laptops, or you know even these days they wanted to be journeys to be continued on the OTT platforms. Lastly, they are looking for you know multi-channel. They want anything everywhere. They want a seamless experience. 
some of you know more details on the as i said personalized they want ai based de materials they want you know uh, tailored services to them uh, uh, in banking industry mostly people use a lot of services because of the rewards they want to leverage they want to reimburse those into their various activity they are, as i said they are influenced by social media they f they have lot of followers uh, uh, they look for those kind of you know suggestions from uh, their followers their friends and family they don't take decision just uh, based on the product uh, which they see and as i said they are socially responsible they do ethical banking they look for uh, products which are more you know sustainable their esg scores are good uh, they, people are also they, these days we have observed that gen z's are also looking for you know uh, green investment the investment they, they are investing in a stocks which are more eco friendly who give uh, you know green loans for example a loans for uh, e vehicles the interest rates are more you know lower as compared to the other vehicles so these are some you know more uh, parameters like they want intuitive ux they want omni channel experience finally they want everywhere anytime they want the accessible all this uh, you know device whether it's a mobile watch the accessibility should be at at par and finally their expectation the customer expectation or satisfaction is very high now how do we you know create this next generation uh, customer experience because the digital economy is driven by these people the next generation user group so to do this what we have done uh, this is a life cycle of a all of us in, in in entire region where you know we start the first thing is that we open our whatsapp or we go to facebook or we see insta reels so there's a interaction of you know reel from top to down then probably we will look over the, what is the traffic for example today is you know <laughs> band in bangalore so people were looking you know the traffic is very less same way you know people will look when i will reach office or when should when should i book my cab if it, or when should i you know hire or you know uh, co to co do with uh, some 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 of my friends and colleagues they they are more on uh, the generation are more on dating apps they are you know using various dating apps whether tinder bumbles in throughout the journey they also you know go and watch their favorite web series on ott if they are free and finally you know in between while doing office if they are stuck in the traffic they are on they are listening music so these are some trends which a person do or uh, every next generation is do doing now what we thought the customer experience is very high of these application these are some of the application how we can adopt these into the financial application what happens what do we observe when these people when they they are using all this application uh, whether it's a tinder where you know they do right swipe or left swipe or you know they are using google products people use whatsapp not only for text they are not doing text they are actually sending audio message so people are more lazy they they don't want to type they were just send audio notes people are uh, you know they are look they are looking for music apps also which throws playlist based on their listening based on their artistic with the the artists which they follow what kind of music they want a uh, lot of people don't directly book the uh tables uh, through restaurants they do to you know table out or dine out kind of a application to get discounts on their final bill and also we have seen like you know people are using cloud they are, they store their data on a variety of application which which provides you know documentation uh obviously all of us are on ott we watch lot of movies a lot of series so these are some trends which people are adopted and the customer experience is very fantastic but what happens when they do their banking or when they go to their insurance application however a person goes only twice or thrice in a year to in an insurance website either to buy a policy or to renew or or unfortunately if he wants to claim but still they do banking day by day but when they open their banking app in any region i am not talking only about india it's more on north america european the customer experience goes down because the interactions the the content which they get that is not personalized that is not you know uh, which, it's a very old school ap application i would say because as i said the background the uh, insurance and banking industry was the first to adopt the computers and and first to adopt the digitization but that was the focus was only on manual to computerization and that is continuous but the change happened when iphone was launched lot of mobile phone 
you know, people are mobile first, everywhere. No one opens, you know, even their laptops to do basic things. Everything is available on phone. That's why we thought, why can't we use these interactions in some of the basic journeys or some crucial journeys of banking and insurance application, not only the front-facing application, also to the enterprise application. And that's why we thought, let's create some of the concepts, and we did some conceptualization on that, how the next generation user experience or customer experience is going to be. So the first one is lifestyle insurance application. Basically, we will, you know, onboard the person, understand their lifestyle. A lifestyle can be, you know, going to gym. A lifestyle can be going uh, to vacation, or it can be, you know, uh, to do a yoga or to take care of their mental health. A lifestyle can be going to an office also. And based on that data points, the insurance company will check whether they are insured. For example, a person, a lot of people in Europe, you know, goes to office with cycle, but are they insured? When they, you know, when they are riding cycle, if something happens, some accident happens, they are not. Not every insurance companies provide that thing. So we thought of, you know, defining all those lifestyles, and based on their lifestyles, the insurance company can, you know, provide that byproduct. Second, uh, super app is a, you know, a super app was a lot of uh, talk of the town last uh, year or few years back. It is heavily declined in North America but it is very good in China and Japan. But what we think that let's create next generation super app. And the last one we thought, which is no one has talked about that, how we can do banking on drive. Like we know Tesla, a good, very nice, you know, dashboard, a lot of Indian cars are also having that thing. But just think that you're driving and you have to do some payment or you have to do some, you know, transaction, your advisor tells you, but you can't stop and do. So you can, leverage that dashboard by doing a conversational UI, by, you know, prompting them that you, and you're driving and you're saying, hey, you know, your friend is asking for $1,000, do you want you to pay? So all the securities are taken care of and then while driving you can do. Uh, here are some examples, for example, we took, uh, uh, again, these are some concepts, I cannot share the actual because of the NDA, but what if I use the left and right sweep of Tinder in a banking application to do, if I do a right, I can do a credit card payment immediately. If I swipe left, it can be a scheduler. I can pay, you know, on certain dates. The, the another example of life tracking versus status. People wants, wants basically a life tracking. For example, we order food or we order, you know, grocery, we get the actual status when the order is picked, where he is, or the, you know, the delivery boy is stuck. So how that can be used, that can be used in a policy claim that your claim status is this, or your loan status is approved or declined or is pending for in, uh, documentation. And all this notification should come with your watches or from your mobile app. Another example would be uh, two-way authentication, which we, we see in Google uh, or in all of our, you know, uh, mailing or with uh, collaboration apps. If I want to log into my website, I need to provide my customer ID, my user ID, and password. Why can't we do something that if I open my website or net banking, immediately, you know, a two-way authentication should come on my watch, and I will say yes, the way we do in Google or in YouTube. Automatically, I will land it to my dashboard. Another example can be, uh, which we have actually applied to a lot of our customers, the Spotify model. The Spotify uh, which actually while onboarding, you know, they, they ask who are your favorite artists and then based on that and based on your behavior, based on your history of sing, listening those songs, it's throw you a playlist. In same way, uh, you know, you can be onboarded uh, to an insurance application. You don't, you, you don't need to tell that, you know, you have a baby at your home. They will understand your life events and then, you know, will, they will suggest you various products. Same can be done on a, you know, investment plan in a wealth management application where they, are, they know your entire data and they know how much income you have and they will, you know, suggest you that you invest in this stock or this commodity. Another one more example, uh, which is actually very good, like, you know, I don't need, I should not, you know, open my mobile app or my net banking to see my stay account status or do some transaction. I can, you know, the way people are using WhatsApp audio, the same can be used. Like, hey Siri or hey XYZ bank, what is this my score? Or can you please transfer XYZ dollars to XYZ person? So instead of, you know, clicking, instead of uh, 
it going with traditional all the trends which is in into the non financial world where people are very much you know satisfied we can leverage here another uh, there are a couple of examples but what what we are trying to say here that if we leverage those interactions those gestures those patterns which are good in the all you know hundreds of apps into financial and insurance application not only in the front facing in the enterprise application the customer experience is going to increase which is not which is which is very little bit of you know average or okay kind of so that was a summary we see lot of scope uh, in the you know fintech industry where we can you know improve the overall experience and, and and i was just you know wondering if i can share this point of view where you can you know also see where you are interacting i am not sure if everyone is from financial but all these trends can be leveraged in any of the model so that was a very small uh, you know point of view unfortunately i got only 10 minutes my time is already up but i am here to interact more i have a detail uh, this point of view is also available on capgemini's website you can you know it's open to public but i am here we can have interaction and any questions any suggestions thank you very much